Ooh, that was fun. Welcome everybody to Math 126E. Um, we are uh, in a remote classroom and uh, my name is Philip Cook. Uh, I'm an instructor here at CSN uh, in the math department. I've been teaching here for four years. This is my, going on my fifth, no, my fourth year. This is uh, going on my fourth year teaching here. Um, perhaps starting my fifth, I can't remember. Uh, days have been blurring together ever since uh, quarantine. Uh, I'm sure you guys are the same. Uh, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, I've been teaching for about 10 years uh, before that. Um, a little bit about me so you guys know uh, just who your teacher is. Um, I uh, am originally from California, but then I kind of moved around for school. I went to the University of Washington for my undergrad up in Seattle. And then I went over to the Ohio State University uh, for my graduate degree. They're very, very big on that, by the way. Uh, if you've ever been to Ohio or if, you've, if you're from Ohio, you know that the Buckeyes, which is the team, uh, the mascot for the OSU is big there. Um, and they're very, very particular about that, the Ohio State. Uh, it's kind of stupid. Um, I remember I got an evaluation once from a student um, and they like they said he like he's the best TA at lowercase t OSU. I said, like, what the heck is that T there for? It's because he wanted to say the Ohio State. Um, fair warning. Uh, the first day is always kind of a uh, a whirlwind for me. I always forget things and then remember to bring them back later because there's a lot to talk about today. There's a lot to talk about with regards to how the courses run, my policies, and everything like that. So. Uh, with that in mind, um, as, uh, as you saw at the be beginning, I mean, I, I don't have them on the video now, but before I started recording, I was showing everybody uh, my little dog, Archie. He's a dachshund. He, uh, he is fully grown, even though he's only nine pounds. Um, he's very, very cute. I'll try and show you guys him every once in a while to, to break up the monotony. Um, I actually, uh, so this is a fun fact about me. I actually just had my first child um back in february uh so my son phoenix is now six months old um and he is currently down for a nap but if uh if he wakes up pretty soon i think my wife will bring him in here to say hello to everybody uh if you guys are interested in that um doesn't matter i'm gonna do it anyways uh so uh what else what else was i gonna say um other things about me, uh, I'm in a band. Uh, we actually just uh, played a show recently, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, if you want to know more about that, feel free to, uh, to ask. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'll go ahead and just get into what the course is all about, okay? Any questions about me before we begin? Nothing? Okay, well then, okay. So I'm gonna share my screen uh, and I'm gonna specifically share uh, like how to get to our course and everything on Canvas. So let me go ahead and do that. Share screen in particular. This one, okay. All right, so you guys, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get the chat up here so I can make sure. Um, so you guys should see a, uh, a dashboard of Canvas, correct? You guys all see that? You. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, okay. So this is my course page, of course. So it's different than the way you see it because you'll, your thing will have all your classes. Not You obviously won't have Math 126, Section 1002. That's something I'm teaching. But we'll go ahead and click on our course. And this is the home page. We'll talk about that more in a little bit, but I want to go straight to the syllabus and we're going to go over the syllabus um, and talk about it. So uh, my name, once again, is Philip Cook. My office, although I won't be there because I'm teaching remotely, my office location is West Charleston 160 D. So if you ever need to send me anything, which I doubt, uh, that's where I'm located. Um, the best way to get in contact with me is via email um, or during class time, of course, like before or after you can uh, stick around, like tell me like you need to talk to me about something, but email is um, 
one of the best ways to do it. You can either do it directly with Outlook with your student email address or with CS uh, or directly through Canvas uh, right here through that inbox. You can send emails directly to your instructors. Um, this is my email address. Uh, one thing of note is that um, my my name, my first name has one L. So it's not it's not Philip with two L's, it's Philip with one L. Uh, don't make that mistake. Um, and so that's going to be the main way you get in contact with me. We'll talk more about emailing and uh, your student e email address in a second. Office hours. Um, I have office hours that like that you can take uh, that you can go to. Normally speaking, they'd be in person, but because these are, this is a remote class, I have to do them online. Um, but they'll be taken. They'll be done through Zoom as well. Um, they're there. They are completely optional. Uh, but I'd love to see you guys there if you have questions. Um, but they're there. I will be here. Uh, uh, I'll be on my Zoom and you can join it whenever you want um, within this time period, 7 to 920 on Mondays and Wednesdays um, or by appointment. If you can't meet during, during that time, you're more than welcome to say like, hey, I can't meet during that time. Can you meet me at blah? Uh, just give me a couple days of times that work in your schedule and we'll see if I can fit it in. Okay. Um, you can, you can directly click this loom to join the off, uh, this link to join the office hours, or you can enter in the meeting ID. There's no password on that one. Whereas there was a password to join this one, uh, the FF nine. Um, so you're not required to attend them, but they're completely open for you to join whenever you want. Um, any questions about office hours? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. That, that is definitely one of the things I've learned from the from this whole re teaching remote is that asking for questions becomes a little more challenging. Um, if I move on and you don't want to like if you don't want to have your voice over the recording and stuff like that, that's totally fine. I understand that. Uh, if you want to type your questions, that's fine too. Um, and if I'm moving too fast and you want to ask a question about something, feel free to just like type in like like a bunch of numbers or like a gibberish so that I know that someone wants to ask, ask a question. Does that make sense? So like, just do, like, if you see the chat, just go, I, I did ASDF, blah, blah, blah. And just saying, Hey, I have a question and I'll wait for you to, to ask it. So moving onward, uh, class information. So this is math 126 E, which is expanded calculus, uh, pre-calculus part one. Our section is 3001. There's no prerequisites for our e-courses at CSN. But we do have a co-requisite class. So you, I'm sure when you signed up for this class, you had to sign up for a Math 26. Now, you might be wondering what that is. That's, uh, it's honestly, put it out of your mind. It's merely a way to distinguish the regular 126s from the 126E. Now, the question I get asked a bunch about 126E is, does it give me the same credit as Math 126? And the answer is yes. The, the difference is that Math 126E has this co-requisite section. And what that does is it basically gives us more time so that if we need to go over a preliminary topic uh, that is from algebra, we spend extra time on it. The way we like to call it is just-in-time remediation, quote unquote, just-in-time remediation, so that we give you necessary skills when they're needed. So in a traditional format, you take math 95 and 96, which is intermediate uh, beginning and intermediate algebra, and you'd learn all those tools and then go into math 126. Um, there was a, like, without getting into too much of the bureaucracy, uh, the governing body of uh, Nevada's system of higher ed education or NSHE uh, made a mandate that all, uh, all for all colleges, all remedial math courses are dropped from college uh, courses, uh, from colleges, besides jumpstart programs, but that's not besides the point. So instead, what we offer is uh, co-requisite courses for students who don't place into Math 126. As I said, Math 126 and 126E, they both give you the same credit. If you pass 126E, it's the same as passing 126. Um, the co-requisite, the Math 26, is just a pass-fail course. Um, as long as you get a D or above, you pass math, math 26. Now, important side note about that is if you pass math, 120, uh, math 26, but you fail the course, right? Um, like if you, get a, if you get a D in math 126E, you can't take math 127. 
you need to see or better in order to get to math 120 uh uh to get to math 127 but if you've got a uh if you've got a d in it you can uh you have passed the 26 and you can take a regular 126 instead of um taking the 126 and paying for all six credits you can just take the three credit 126. that's how the co-requisite works and i believe my son is awake so we're going to take a small break and uh introduce him so uh this is my son uh, and my wife ayla so everyone say hello to my wife ayla and my son phoenix let me hold him you just woke up didn't you say hello to everybody hi hello so this is Phoenix. He will be uh, showing up from a uh, time to time. Are you are you wait just waking up, or did you wake up for a little bit? Mm. So, hello everybody, and bye everybody. <laughs> Thank you for showing. You're up. Welcome. So, uh, Archie. Oh, I don't know if you were able to see it in the recording since I'm sharing my screen, uh, but if if not. I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll see him again sometime soon. Uh, so. Did you get Archie? Uh, yeah, I showed him Archie. Uh, Archie, leave. Otherwise, you're going to keep whining to get out of the door. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for saying these very cute. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so he's six months old. He uh, turned six months uh, 10 days ago. Thank you. He's uh, He's... It's been a it's been a process uh, adjusting, but uh, it's been a welcome one. Back to everything. Does anybody have any questions about the co-requisite thing? Hopefully, you can't hear me. my computer is a little old and it's starting to get angry at me, so it's starting to uh, uh, the fans starting to go a little bit higher. I hope that doesn't happen for too much longer. Um. Anyways, so. What I mean by just-in-time remediation, just to give you an example of what this is, is imagine we're going to start, like, one of the things we're going to talk about in math, uh, in math 126 uh, is polynomial functions. Now, in order to talk about polynomial functions, we need to know about polynomials. We need to know about like terms and all, those, all that stuff. If you know about it, awesome. If it's been a long time, that's okay, too. And if it's completely foreign to you, that's still fine. That's what this whole time is here for. So once we start talking about polynomial functions, once we're ready to talk about that, we'll take a little side detour and talk about all the properties of polynomials, how to add them, how to subtract them, how to simplify them, how to multiply and divide them, how to factor them and all that stuff. Sometimes it'll be a specific chunk that's not related to anything because it's just preliminary information that we need to know. Um, and if you're curious about what we're going over, uh, there, uh, there is a, uh, a link on, on the front page to our schedule for the week and, and every subsequent week. So that's something we can do later on. But the description of Math 126 is a, a rigorous discussion of all algebra topics necessary to prepare you for calculus, if that's your goal. Um, and as you know, the days and times, these are our times that we're meeting. Here's a, you can go from the direct link from the syllabus to join these things, but as you'll see on the homepage, there's always just a direct link there. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, I'm a, one of my biggest hobbies is playing video games. I absolutely love video games, both console and, uh, and computer games. Um, so during breaks and stuff like that, feel free, or beginning and end of class, feel free to talk to me about them. I love talking about video games. Um, one of my favorite games, in fact, my favorite game is the password ff9 uh final fantasy 9 was my favorite game growing up i've played it several times since then um and uh yeah so that's why the passcode is ff9 here right here the goals these are the object uh these are the course learning outcomes uh uh the student learning outcomes for the course these are all the things that are expected of you to do and by the, the end of the course you will be able to do Here's a schedule. If you click on it, you'll be sent to our lecture schedule. This goes over what we'll be going over each week when there are tests. It doesn't say when the homeworks are due, but that's going to already be implemented into our Canvas structure. Uh, and if you look at your, uh, your course, uh, your Canvas calendar. So going back to this, <clears throat> we'll talk about the required materials. And as a note about our 
Zoom etiquette. I'll keep bringing up new Zoom etiquettes as they pop into my head. Please feel free to ask a question at any time, even when I'm talking. I will always have the chat up on my screen so that if someone has a question, um, I will take a second to stop and answer it. Um, in my class, there is no such thing as a stupid question. Um, and that's the way I believe it should be for any, uh, any course uh, that, you're, uh, that you, you attend. There should be no stupid questions. And I will never, ever make you feel bad about asking a question. Um, that's when I was at, when I was in, uh, the, when, when I was at the University of Washington, there was one teacher. Um, I'll talk about him more because he's very, very important to me. Uh, he was probably one of the worst professors I've ever had. It was an awful experience, but also, uh, also amazing because everyone who, who was in the math department, uh, who was a math major at, at UW had to take this guy. Uh, his name was Garth Warner. He was a very angry man, um, who didn't have email at all. Um, and then, uh, so getting contacted with him was basically impossible. Um, but one of the things that was very, very definitive, like very, very characteristic of, of his class is that he was never happy to answer questions. And I did not like that. Um, if you ever want to be a teacher, that's one of the things I, I've noticed uh, about all my, uh, all my colleagues is that you take inspiration from where you, from the classes that you took as to what you liked and what you didn't like. So point being is that there are no stupid questions. Feel free to ask whenever you want. Um, if it's off topic, um, I might wait until like a, uh, the end of class to address it, um, unless it's something really cool and I wanna talk about it, but anyways. Required materials. So there is a textbook for this class, but it's not required. But there is like, so if you're like me, I love having physical copies of textbooks, but that's completely optional. Um, like I have in this room alone, I have like six pre-calculus textbooks from different courses that I've taught from my years of teaching. Um, but the one thing that is required is an access code for my lab math, which is a Pearson product, if you know who Pearson is. Um, and you can either get that from the CSN bookstore or you can purchase it directly from my math lab. Now you didn't hear this from me, uh, but you can get it. I believe it's cheaper to purchase it directly through with a credit card or a debit card. Uh, that being said, if you are relying on, uh, if you have stu uh, student financial aid or whatever, I think they may require you to purchase it through the bookstore for receipts and stuff like that. Um, I'm not too privy. I, I remember one of my students talking about the uh, the veter U.S. veterans financial aid and that that did have to go through there. So check with your financial aid if you have it. Um, if you have any questions about it, you can always ask me. I might not know the answer right away, but I can always point you in the right direction. And I will figure it out. I will help you figure it out. Um, so this is the one you want, um, but you can, once again, there's a way to access it directly through our, uh, our Canvas page. And I'll, I'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. The other thing that is required, I mean, required, not required, like uh, is a scientific calculator. Um, I absolutely adore these two cast, uh, these two calculators here, uh, the Casio FX nine nine one EX plus and the Casio FX one one five ES plus. Um, I'm so lame that I actually have. Where's my? Where's my? Where's my EX? Oh no, honey, where's my EX? Darn it, I don't have it. Um, oh well, um, I'll show you just the Casio 115 EX Plus. This calculator right here is absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorites. Um, this thing will be a lifesaver if, you uh, if you're not allowed to sign uh, graphing calculators. This thing is just amazing. And if you wanna know more about it, uh, I might be able to post a video on how to use it. Yeah, um, Casio scientific calculators. So a student said, asked, do you know which store they're at? They should be at all major department stores. They should be available at Walmart, Target. Uh, you might even be able to find them at like a, a grocery store, like an Albertsons or a Smith's or whatever. Uh, but you can also purchase them online uh, through Amazon or, or, or other things. Um, yeah, so Targets and Staples, Office Max would probably have them as well. They're just a very good calculator. Texas Instruments is still very good. Um, but... Um, anyways, um, 
since this is remote and a lot of our stuff is done remotely, um, I can't stop you from using a graph and calculator, but I encourage you to not use one unless you're using it just to kind of to, to aid in your studying and your learning. But like for tests and, uh, and stuff and for homework, I'd recommend using the scientific because if you get to math 127 or 120, uh, like if you're taking a 127 in person or a 181 in person, your instructor may only allow you a scientific or they might not allow you a, a calculator at all on stuff. So I don't want you to feel like a 120, uh, like a graph calculator is a crutch. Um, that's why I like this scientific calculator. Um, so yeah, uh, I think these things are um, anywhere from, the, they're usually around 15 to 20 bucks. Um, you will, you should be able to rent one from the CSN libraries. Um, if you need help with that, feel free to let me know. Uh, feel free to email me and I can get you uh, the information you need to get a um, one of these. Um, I've been meaning to do it. I've just been way too busy, uh, as you can imagine with a newborn. But uh, I'm really hoping at some point I'll be able to work on a, a, a grant with CSN to get the math department like a uh, hundred of these. Uh, ah. uh, so uh, one of our students um, has said, I have the 115 ES. Would Desmos scientific ca uh, calculator work if I don't have it handy and I'm traveling or not home? Excellent question. So. Um, Yes, so there's Desmos. Uh, like I'm going to open up a new tab and go to Desmos um, graphing calculator. So Desmos is this beautiful program. Uh, this is its graphing, but there's more things you can do. Um, it can allow you to graph things, to visualize, and you can graph mo both functions and equations. It's completely free. Feel free to use it at, yeah, at your own pace. Um, if you want to know more about it, please feel free to ask me. But yeah, you're totally allowed to do that. Um, Anyways, any questions on the required materials? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I'm gonna wait for any questions. Uh, while I'm waiting, um, as a note, um, if don't worry, uh, if you're waiting on financial aid or if you just don't have the time right now to purchase it, there will be a free two week access code to the, our, our course shell on my math lab, or sorry, my lab. It used to be called my math lab. I'll slip up every once in a while. Um, so you don't need to have to purchase it today, but I encourage you to purchase it as soon as possible so that you don't have your subscription end um, and then have to redo it um, in, a in a frantic panic. So, but you are allowed a two free week access code. So meetings, they'll be held through Zoom and all the lectures are recorded. This one's gonna be recorded via Zoom, but my other ones are done on my iPad. You'll see what I mean next time. Um, and we'll do a little bit of a brief overview of how, uh, how the Zoom etiquette will work with my, uh, my iPad later on. But they'll be recorded. So if you can't make it to uh, class that day, um, don't worry. They'll usually be uh, recorded and uploaded to YouTube and then a link will be posted to Canvas uh, later, like about 36 hours. You give me about 36 hours. Uh, usually it, it doesn't take that long, but uh, if it's not up at that point, if it's not up within about 36 hours, just send me a polite email to remind me. Uh, and because every once in a while I forget, uh, I'm human. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you don't attend the class, uh, I, I really hope you do. The main reason why is because if you don't attend the lecture, uh, so a student says we have to go to class every day. Yes, I will not be taking attendance. Um, so it's not mandatory, but it's really, really encouraged because it, especially in this remote environment, there's times where you want to ask a question. And if you're watching the lecture, the re recorded lecture, you can't ask a question, right? That being said, if you're watching the recording, you can always like, like find out the timestamp, send me an email, say like, hey, can you elaborate what you meant here at five minutes and 32 seconds, and I'm happy to respond to those emails. Um, but it is my expectation uh, in this course that if you don't attend, that you watch the recording of the lecture uh, so that you have that preliminary, like you have that knowledge going into your homeworks and stuff. Um, so I expect you to do them and to ask questions if you have them, okay? Once again, here's a link to everything that you need. Um, but yeah, we have class Monday through Thursday from 9.30 to 
Any questions about meetings or recordings or anything like that? I'll show you where to find the recordings later on when we go to the homepage. Okay, doesn't look like there's any questions. So we'll move on to my email policy. I always respond to emails within one business day. So one business day. So if you email me over the weekend, don't necessarily expect a response. Sometimes I do over the weekend if I have a, if I have a spare moment, but uh, don't expect it. Um, so if you email me on Saturday night, you will probably see, see an email by Monday, usually Monday morning when I'm, uh, when I'm in my office hours and nobody's there. Um, I can respond then, or I'll respond during my breaks. Um, but if you email me at 10 o'clock at night on a Monday, I'll probably respond the following, the following day, Tuesday or whatever. Um, if I don't respond within a business day, maybe it got lost in my emails. May, like, you know how, when you like, you get a text message from somebody, maybe it's just me and my, my over anxious self. Um, but if I like, maybe I'll open it and I'm like, Oh, I need to respond to this. And then um, it, uh, then I get distracted and then two weeks go by and I haven't, I realized that I haven't responded to that person and I'm pretty sure that they hate me now. Um, that's at least where my mind goes. Um, <laughs> but point being is if you don't receive a response from me, please feel free to send me a follow-up email saying, Hey, Phil, uh, I sent you an email. Can you reply back? Um, but anyways, one big thing is this line right here. It's not, I will only, it's honestly, it's, I can only respond to emails sent from your official CSN email or through Canvas. Now that's, I'm, it's not be, being nitpicky. There's a, a government regulation called FERPA. Uh, I forget what the acronym stands for. I mean, F probably stands for federal education, blah, 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 blah. It's a, it's a thing that tries to protect your academic information, both your class time, like anything related to academics. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Okay. Anything related to academics needs to be confidential. Uh, like, and I, I, I don't like to get too negative and, and too triggering uh, during certain things, but this is an example of why it has to be your CSN email. Say you have a stalker and they create a fake email, a fake Gmail account and say, hey, when's class and where is it located? And if I were to respond to that with the class and location, then this stalker would know your location. And that's not good. That's not a good thing, right? That's why it's, it's things like that. Or somebody might be trying to figure out your course grade and make a fake account. If I know it's your student account, it is a secure email address that only you can access. That's the reason why. So if you send me an email from a Gmail or Yahoo or a PacuServe or whatever, whatever, I'll just send a polite email saying, hey, can you please email me directly through Canvas or with your student email address? That's the only thing I can respond to. It's not because I want you to jump through hoops. It's just, it's a, it's a red tape that I've got to follow. Okay. Any questions about the, um, the email policy? Once again, if you want to email me through Canvas, just click on this inbox and send me an email through there. Okay. Moving on to assessment. So how do we, how are you assessed in this course? Pretty much everything is gonna be run through my, my lab. So there are homeworks due every week of the semester. They're broken up into parts and you'll see that in a second, but they're always due on Sunday nights at 11.59 PM. The specific dates um, will be found on our homepage every week. Um, and ooh, that's a typo. Not your lowest two, your lowest six homework assignments, because there's roughly three to uh, one to four each week, and your lowest six homework scores will be dropped from the calculation. That's to account for maybe, maybe you just forgot one week, maybe it's a big busy week for your other classes and you just didn't get to it. You don't have to panic, it's dropped. Um, that being said, I do allow you to complete your assignments all the way up until December 10th for partial credit uh, and on the stuff that uh, is uh, that you didn't finish. So if you finish 80% uh, of the homework, like let's say there's 10 questions and you finish eight of them, you can still finish those last two for 50% of them. So you can get a nine out of 10 on that assignment. Um, so feel free to work on it after the due date. It's a good idea because more practice in math, the better. Um, 
but you are allowed to do it up until December 10th for a 50% penalty on anything that you didn't complete. But even still, you're still your lowest six homework assignments are dropped. Um, in addition to homeworks for assessment, there will be six times tests and a cumulative final. The tests are non-cumulative, but math does build upon itself. Uh, and a final exam uh, taken directly through my lab. Um, you will have two hours to complete, so 120 minutes uh, to complete each test. But you will be given three attempts at each test. I'm trying something new this semester um, that I, I wanted to test out uh, with the idea of making tests not as high stakes. Knowing that um, I, I found that the anxiety that comes from make or break tests can be a little bit uh, problematic. So I wanna try something new. I'm gonna give you three attempts at each test and it will keep your highest score. So even if you do bad on the next test, uh, next attempt, you will still get that best attempt. So like for what I mean is test one, you get it like a first attempt, you get a 60, second attempt, you get an 80, third attempt, you get a 50, it keeps that 80. So don't worry, like going into your third attempt or, or your second attempt, don't worry about getting a worse score. You will, uh, you will always get the best score. The main reason that I do this and what I expect from you the reason why I'm being lenient and giving you three attempts is that I want you to learn from your mistakes. Maybe in other courses, taking a, a one-off test and no retakes would be fine, but mathematics is, in my experience, is learned from failure. It's learned from making mistakes because you learn, okay, that's not how you do it. So what I want, like what I expect out of you is if, you, if you're unhappy with your first attempt, I want you to go through each problem like I want you to be writing all your work down on paper when you're doing these exams. Don't try and do it by hand. Um, like don't try and do it in your head. That's just too much to expect. Um, but write them down and look over every problem. If you can't figure out your mistakes, scan it uh, or take pictures of your, your stuff. Send me an email saying, hey, Phil, I don't know where I went wrong. Um, it could be that you made a typo and I can give you credit back. It could be that you made a silly error and I can give you partial credit back or and and blah, 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 blah. So, well, thank you. I appreciate like the, 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 the high, like the, the praise, um, but yeah. Um, since this is remote, there's no way I can tell if you're using your notes. I, 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 I'm gonna be fully upfront with you guys. There's no way for me to tell if you're using your notes. Um, and I would still recommend that on tests that you don't do it. Remember, you have three attempts. So what, what's the harm in taking your first attempt completely blind after studying, of course? The reason why I say I don't recommend looking at your notes is that a lot of the things in your future math courses, particularly Math 181, Math 127 has a couple things that are related to Math 126, but it's kind of just the rest of the material to prepare you for 181. Um, but Math 120, 181 especially will rely on topics from Math 126 and stuff that we learned from, uh, from our co-requisite that you're just expected to know like the back of your hand. I like to describe it like, imagine you're playing ho uh, hockey. If you, if you develop a crutch so that you haven't learned how to skate very well, you can't really get down the, the, the rink very fast because you're always gonna be focusing on your footing. You're always going to be focusing on your skating and not focusing on using your, whatever they call it. I, I don't know hockey very well. I, I know I should be a Golden Knights fan, uh, but I have, I just haven't had the time to get into it. I think it's called a stick, a hockey stick, whatever. You're not going to be able to focus on your stick because you're going to be focused on your feet. So the teacher will be talking about all this new stuff that you're supposed to be learning, and you're going to be bogged down with trying to remember all the stuff from 126. Does that make sense? So I don't want you to develop it as a crutch, okay? Um, the other thing that I will say, and because it's the elephant in the room, I know about things like Mathway and, uh, and other math solving apps. I know they exist. I don't, uh, and they have flaws in them that I can find and catch, believe me. I've caught several students in the previous semesters of students using that um, 
to do their homework and do their tests. Please don't. That's the reason why I give you the three attempts. It's an insult to me and to your fellow classmates and to CSN, because then you're not actually learning the material. If you want to use it as a checking tool, by all means, go ahead. But do not do it, use it to solve these things, because eventually, like, I, I, like eventually you might be in the classroom and you won't be able to use that in an exam and then you will fail. Um, so please, I can tell when students are using it very easily. Um, it's very apparent to me in a lot of the ways that things happen. So I, I don't like to be negative very often, but it's a slap in the face to me. And I try to be a very, very nice guy and very accommodating. Um, and I just don't like being taken advantage of. So please do not use that. Um, I really appreciate it. Okay. I, that, that's where I'll stop. Like I have to get negative a little bit later uh, a couple times. Um, but anyways, Point being, don't use it unless you're using it as just purely a checking tool. And I'd prefer if you didn't use it on tests as a checking tool because the point of a test is to make sure you know it, not to, to check your work, check your work after the fact. But anyways, um, back to the tests and, and everything that's going on here. Um, they will always be open Friday uh, of the, the week that they're due, uh, that, they, that, that they're open, and they'll be due the following Friday. I recommend doing it Friday or over the weekend because we're gonna start learning new material the next week. But it's just because we're in a remote environment, I'm assuming that you have other stuff going on in your life um, so that you can't really sit down, uh, like, every, like you can't be guaranteed to have a time uh, on Saturday or, or, or on Friday to do your exam. So that's why I give you that extra, that whole week to do it. Um, Student, excellent question. So a student asks, do we have to scan our work for the quizzes? No, you do not. Um, I'd recommend, like, but you should still be doing it on paper and then so that you can send me pictures of your work if you can't figure out where you went wrong. I love when students email me questions from, from their homework or their exams and they're like, I don't know where I went wrong and they provide me with work. That's my favorite one because then I can figure out where you're making the mistake and I can cater my email and my help directly to what you're making or where you're making mistakes. But yes, you do not need to show, or no, you do not need to show the work. You do not, do not need to email it to me for this course. Um, excellent question. So uh, the lecture schedule has these things. Um, they'll be due at midnight. Um, so if you start at 1130, you better finish it in 29 minutes and 29 uh, and 59 seconds. Um, and if it's not completed, it will count as a zero. Um, your lowest test score, however, of those six tests will be dropped. However, the final exam does not get dropped. The final exam is required. It's not part of the dropping process. The six tests, one of those will get dropped, but the final exam does not get dropped and it has to be taken. Is that clear? So quick pop quiz. Do you have to take the final? Yes, you have to take the final. <laughs> Very good. I love the, like, you guys are awesome. You guys are interacting way more than my previous class from last semester. And I love that. I love that. Thank you, guys. Please keep it up. I love interaction. Um, so the final exam has to be taken, and it's not dropped because it's a final exam. Um, accessing my math lab, or my lab, sorry. I keep saying my math lab, and it's my lab now. Um, you can click on that. I'm going to scroll up for a second. Don't worry if you haven't started finished reading. We're coming right back. On the side here on this tab, you'll see My Lab and Mastery. This is how you'll access our course. You do not need to search in a separate window, Pearson My Lab. You don't need to do that. It's already rooted into our course, which is, makes it a lot easier, honestly. So that's how you'll access the homework and the exams. Any questions on our assessment methods? Any other questions, rather? I see a no. Excellent. Uh, thank you. So we'll move on. This is how grades are going to be assigned. The tests, the six tests, they account for 50% of the grade. Your lowest one is dropped. The homework accounts for 30%. Uh, that's another typo. It should say six. Uh, I'll update that in a second uh, after this class is done. And the final exam is worth 20%. The final exam also has three, uh, like our, let me look back on that one. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, um, anyways, I'll get back to that in, uh, in a second. For a total of 100%, here's the grading scale. Um, oh man, I, I forgot to make this edit. It's a, it's a, it's a, nice, a nice joke that I like to, to put in. Here's my grading scale. A 92% and above is an A, 92, 92 is an A minus and so on and so forth. Um, I forgot to make this edit. Uh, it's a new thing. I'm trying to get with the Gen Z lingo because I like the way you guys talk. Uh, and uh, like the TikTok, very fun stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm saying it as the TikTok because I know that'll make you guys cringe a little bit. Um, uh, I do it for me because I love to, like I can feel the, tr the cringe in your guys' uh, face even, th even through the, uh, even through the, the computer. Um, the way I usually like to write this is a 72 to a 77 is a C and a 70 to a 72 is what I like to call a spicy C with those Gen Z sparkles. Um, and a spicy C is still a C. You'll still get credit for the class, but it was, uh, it was just enough to get the, the C. I don't like giving C minuses uh, primarily because in order to get into the next course, you have to have a C or better. A C minus in math 126 will not allow you to get into 127. So I don't really do C minuses. I do B minuses and A minuses and D minuses, uh, but everything else, C is 70% or above. Now this is pretty static. I typically don't change my, uh, my, break, uh, my grade break, uh, break, breaking points. Every once in a while, I might tweak it a little bit, like maybe a 91.9 .9 and above is an A. Uh, but that is not guaranteed. So I'm on the record right now saying that do not expect this to adjust. So if, if it's at the end of the semester and you've got an 89, you can email me saying, hey, can I be bumped up to an A minus? But that's not going to happen unless, uh, like, unless I make an executive decision for everybody. Um, so do not expect this to change. Um, but uh, this is what the grade cutoffs typically are. Extra credit, there's no extra credit offered for this course. Um, everything is given, like that's why I have all these kind of retakes and, and lowest scores dropped. And then as we mentioned, the co-requisite, this is just a little side bit that you had to sign up for to take the expand the 126E. Um, as long as you get a D or higher in math 126E, you will have a passing grade in 126 because it's a pass fail little subsection. And then if you get a D, if you pass one uh, math, 26, not 126E. If you pass 26, you can go into a just a regular 126 the following semester. Any questions on the grades? Perfect. Okay, so uh, student says, is all our coursework located in, in, in just the 126 module? Uh, do you mean the, the 126 Canvas course? Is that what you're saying? Yes, because I noticed that there was the, like, I know there's the supplemental instruction one that was also, like, included, like, with enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not entirely, I'm not entirely following. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. Thank you for asking. Thank you for the clarification. I, I really appreciate it. So, honestly, you had to sign up for it. It's, it's there uh, so that you're given six credits of contact time. So like, so that they can pay me for six hours of contact time, because this is a much bigger class than 126 regular. What regular 126 is only three credits. Um, so it's there, the 26 is for that quote unquote, just in time uh, remediation. So it's supposed to be there so that in a regular 126, I go straight into polynomials with the expectation that you already know how polynomials are added, subtracted, factored, and everything. In 126E, I don't assume that. You might, you might do it because this is for all people. Uh, this is for everybody. This is open to anybody uh, who's, uh, who who's takes a uh, uh, class at CSN. If you, like, if you took the Alex placement test and you didn't place into 126, uh, into anything, you can take math 120E, 124E, or 126E. 126E is the STEM track course. Um, so it's just for students who maybe need it, like, I like to think of it as kind of Swiss cheese knowledge. Maybe you took uh, algebra in high school or, or previously at CSN, and it's been a while, and you remember some things, but you don't remember everything. 
every once in a while, there'll be days where I spend some time going over preliminary information, or maybe even that day, I'll cover a little bit of preliminary information so that we can talk about the, the 126 topic. Does that, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. On to late work policy. Um, so late work will be accepted, as I mentioned, up until December 10th for a 50% point reduction on the remaining questions. It's not like the whole, que the whole assignment gets 50%. It's only the stuff that you didn't do. Uh, so as I said before, if the, you've got an 80% and you finish the rest of the questions, you'd get 50% of those 20%. So you get 10%, you get 90% total. Um, so as a general rule, by the way, so. Uh, I do not extend deadlines or allow makeups on tests as a general rule. That being said, I understand that life gets in the way every once in a while. Uh, a student asked a great question for the test. Do we need a proctor? No, I'm giving you that leniency because I don't like, uh, and this is me personally, so I, I'm glad you mentioned this. There are two main options for proctoring in a virtual environment. There's proctor you or something like proctor you or there's Respondus, those are the, or, or something like Respondus, lockdown browser. ProctorU is something that you'd have to pay for. Um, our college, I don't think, uh, waives that that um, that fee for you guys, and I don't want you to pay more than you have to. I I I want to. I'm going to extend the trust that you will be honest while you're taking my exams and my homework assignments, um, and I I hope uh, I. Hope you do not break that trust. Um, so the point is with ProctorU, I don't wanna make you have to pay for something for each test, that would be ridiculous. Cause I think ProctorU is like 15 bucks per one. And I don't wanna do that for you. Um, and then respond as lockdown browser. I don't wanna, I, I would feel disingenuous to make you install something that I wouldn't want installed on my own computer. I don't like the idea of, a like of that software, the software that is able to control my computer. Now, like that's a conspiracy theory. It's a little tinfoil hat, I'm sure. Um, I just don't like the idea of some program being able to completely lock down everything on my computer. Um, so, uh, because if like maybe some guy invents, a, some guy or girl invents a virus that allows them to access respondents and then completely lock down your computer. I don't like the idea. So I don't feel comfortable forcing you to do something that I don't feel comfortable with myself. Does that make sense? I'm glad someone said that it's completely valid. So yeah, I there's no proctor because I uh, I uh, for the reasons I gave, I expect that you will be honest on your assessments. Okay, please don't take advantage of me on that aspect. Um, back to what I was saying, um, and I hope that answered your question. If you have any more, feel free to ask, or if you need more clarification. Um, once again, I understand that life can get in the way every once in a while. Um, I mean. To give you a, a personal example, uh, my wife went into labor in the middle of the semester uh, last uh, last spring, and um, that was my life getting in the way. I had to work around it. I had to kind of adjust my course. I had to work with some colleagues to help me get things covered and everything. Um, so I understand that life gets in the way more than ever now that I have a kid. Um, so I am not, <laughs> excuse my language, I'm not an asshole. At least I don't think I am, uh, excuse my language. Um, and I, I like to think I'm a reasonable person. It's just, I need to, I need you to, to and uh, I'll get to that question in just a second. Uh, the, the student asked me something. Um, I just need prompt in like a prompt response. So I may offer, uh, I may offer extensions at my discretion, but I ask you, please contact me early and keep keep uh, con keep in contact with me as we move forward, uh, so that I can make the uh, arrangements as soon as possible. Um, I'm a fairly reasonable person, as I said, so it doesn't hurt to ask. I like I used to have a policy where I said no do uh, no deadlines, uh, like, and it made like some students eventually reached out, and I realized that I was being a little too harsh. So point being is it never hurts to ask. Like maybe you, like maybe it doesn't work in this context because we're remote, but maybe your car broke down 
but it still works in this. Maybe you were at an appointment, your car broke down and you weren't able to get to your home to take your test. Send me an email and you may, like I, I at my discretion, I may give you uh, like an extension uh, or a, another makeup or something. Um, sometimes there's glitches and all that stuff. Point is keep in contact with me early uh, if that happens. Um, any questions on that? On my extension policy for offering tests? And that, that applies especially well to the final exam because the final exam will be due Friday of final exam week. And then I have to get in grades very quickly afterwards. Uh, I'm ex like, I, it's a requirement of my job at the college is that I get my grades in like immediately after finals week. So I, I, can, I can extend the due date like a day or two, uh, but that's about it. So if you, if you email me three days later, it's gonna be like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I've already entered grades. So anyways, that's my, uh, <clears throat> my extent, my late work policy. A student asked, are we able to get tutoring? And I'm glad you asked that because that is something very, very particular to Math 126 E and all of our E courses. Um, you probably got an email this morning from uh, our tutoring center. We have a specific online schedule of tutors that you can go to uh, for 126, 124E and 120E, 126E, that is specifically designed to, designed to cater to you. There's a, a whole schedule on, on who you can, uh, like when they're available. Um, and you can go to that whenever you want. You can also attend my office hours for quote unquote tutoring. Um, and uh, that's cool too. Um, uh, and then you can also go to, uh, I'll talk about the Centers for Academic Success a little bit later, but yes, there is tutoring and we'll talk about it more in a little bit. Okay. Moving on to some disclaimers and advice. <clears throat> this one is a important one. It's my, uh, I reserve the right to change anything in the syllabus at a moment's notice, um, as necessary as I see fit. Now, this isn't so that I play God or anything like that. I, I, it's not going to be like, Haha, I'm going to make the final exam worth 90% of your grade uh, at the last minute. So it's not sort for that. It's just so that if unforeseen circumstances arise, I can adjust the course as necessary. Um, the case in point is think about uh, two years ago when we went on, uh, when we went, when COVID started. I had to completely revamp my course from being in person to online. And if I didn't have this disclaimer in there, I wouldn't be able to do that. That's the reason why this is here. It's not so that I can be vindictive or anything like that. It's purely so that if there's extenuating circumstances, I can adjust the course as necessary. Um, I already mentioned this kind of before, but be, be wise with your tests. You have three attempts. Go into it after studying for your first attempt. Try it, try it out. If you're unhappy, if you're happy, perfect. Just call it good. If you're unhappy, study up, figure out where you went wrong, feel free to email me, and then come back again, knowing full well that even if you score worse on the second attempt, you still have your first attempt, and that's the score that you'll keep. Okay? I really, really encourage that. I can tell you 100%, as a student and as a teacher, as I've learned, like as a student of mathematics, the best way to learn things is through mistakes. You'd be like, oh, that's what I did wrong. So finding your mistakes and highlighting them. Once I started doing that as a math student, I became so much better. And that's something I want you to know about me. That This is kind of a, a small aside. I wasn't perfect in mathematics. Uh, like I wasn't. It, it took me like I struggled with mathematics as well. What I liked, what I like to tell students is mathematics is all about tenacity especially with graduate degree in mathematics. Uh, um, if you wanna know more about a graduate degree in mathematics, I could talk your ear off. But anyways, mathematics is all about tenacity. It's how much are you willing to put in the effort? Um, some of the best mathematicians that I know uh, are, it didn't come naturally to them. They had to work really hard to figure things out and they had to figure out how their brain worked with the mathematics. And part of that, that really helped me was like figuring out where I made mistakes and kind of like making red marks um, and figuring out like, and like saying, that's where I made the mistake. Don't do that again. Um, anyways, 
The other one disclaimer is don't procrastinate. Mathematics is something that takes time and builds on itself. So if you don't spend time throughout the week doing it, it's going to be, there's going to be a domino effect where you need to learn this previous thing in order to get to the, to understand this new thing, blah, blah, blah. So it's good to start early and practice often. One of the things like, uh, this is not a disclaimer in here, but it's something I want to mention. If this is your first remote class or first online class, I want to give you a tip um, on how to be productive. Um, because this is not normal. This is not a, this is not the normal way that we were used to, to taking classes. One of the things I like to do is set aside some time every day that, that you can to work um, and make sure that's only time for that so that you don't get distracted and you don't feel guilty for ignoring everything while you're working on that. A, and then B, this is a nice little tip. You can use it if you want. Um, I, I found it worked for me when I started working from home in COVID because it, I, let me tell you, uh, and I, I'm doing this so that I can kind of show you that I'm human. I got extremely depressed uh, during the beginning of quarantine. I was not doing well um, because my home life and my work life were getting mixed and it was just driving me uh, insane a little bit. It was really bad. One of the things that I did to help me is I did something to distinguish work from home. Uh, and what I did, it was stupid, is I put on... Uh, right here, this is, this is a coat that I only wear for work. I only wear this for work. Um, so this is my work coat and I put it on whenever I'm working. I've seen other students do it where they put shoes on in their house when they're working. It's a cool thing. Feel free to use it if you want. Um, if you're interested in more tips to like separate, uh, I know my wife, what she does is she puts a little, um, curtain around her, her desk, uh, so that she, is at work and not in her own when that happens. Anyways, those are just some, uh, like, it's free advice. Take it if you want, uh, but you don't have to. Anyways, important dates. Uh, moving on, unless there's any questions about these things. Okay. Um, these are just important dates to know of uh, with regards to registration and everything like that. The last day to withdraw with a 100% refund is uh, the 5th of September, with a 50% refund is the, thir uh, is the 13th. To withdraw without a grade of W, W standing for withdraw is the 13th. The last day to change to audit is the 5th of November, and the last day to drop with a grade of W is, a, uh, is the, the same day. Now, what is auditing and withdrawal? Um, I, I'm going to let you know in case you don't know. If you already know, feel free to... Uh, tune out for a minute or two, but withdrawing just shows up on your transcript as a W. I have Ws on my transcript. It doesn't specify the reason. And your colleges that you apply for and your jobs that look at your transcripts and things like that, it just shows W. And I can tell you from experience, most people don't put any stock into it as long as it's a one-off or two-off thing. It's only when you start seeing like a consistent W every semester for like two years that it starts to raise a red flag because everyone understands that life gets in the way. Um, uh, maybe one day, like maybe one semester, something really bad happened. I hope it doesn't for any, like I hope it doesn't happen to any of you. I don't want anything bad to happen to you guys. But let's say it does and just, you can't focus on school. There are more like crazy thought, but there are more important things than school, right? Um, and those things should be taken care of. And uh, in that case, I might give you the advice of like, maybe, maybe Math 126E is not the right time for right now. Maybe we'll take care of it next time. So a W is just a withdrawal. It just says that you withdrew. It doesn't give a reason why, and it shouldn't, honestly. Uh, and it just, it shows up on your transcript. It doesn't give you a grade. It doesn't affect GPA at all. Um, it just shows up. Auditing is something you can do. Um, and what that does is it allows you to stay enrolled in the class. So withdrawing removes you from the class. You don't get a grade at all. Auditing allows you to stay in the class, keep attending the lectures, and keep doing the assignments if you want. You're not required to because you're not getting a grade for auditing. You're just attending, um, and you're learning the material so that maybe next semester you some of it retains so that you can be better prepared for the next semester. So that's what you can do if you want to audit. Feel free to talk to me if you want to know more. Um, here are the holidays 
these are the recognized uh, the recognized CSN holidays. So if there's like a, I know like you can look for any day technically has a holiday pretty much. I think like you can look for like there's like Pancake Tuesday or whatever, um, or um, National Dog Day. Those are not recognized CSN holidays. Uh, these are the ones, and we will not have. Uh, lectures during these uh, during these days. These will be canceled. The class is canceled. Um, I'm not paid to be uh, the, there that day, uh, and it would be uh, it would be a big problem actually if I did require a lecture that day. That would be a bad thing, uh, and I could get in trouble. So these are the days off. Um, I hope you enjoy them. Some classroom policies. Unless there's any questions about uh, this auditing stuff or any of these important dates. Thanksgiving break is technically starts the 25th and goes to the 26th, but we don't have class on Friday, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay, we're nearly done, guys. We're almost there because a lot of this stuff I'm going to kind of just whiz through. Recording policy, please just let me know if you plan on recording yourself because I'm already recording it. You don't really need to. Um, but if you do plan on recording something, please let me know. Um, so that I know if something is going to be on the internet or whatever. Um, just it's kind of a courteous thing, you know. Um, ADA statement or the DRC, uh, the Disability Resource Center. If you have a registered, uh, a disability, whatever it may be, um, you don't need to tell me now or you can tell me privately um, if you want, but um, you are allowed to attend uh, to contact the Disability Resource Center or the DRC so you can get accommodations, um, whether that be like a uh, quiet testing environment, um, one and a half time on test for whatever reason. Um, uh, like the, like there, there's a there's a new uh, a myriad of things that it could be. But the point being is I can only give accommodations if I have a signed letter from the Disability Resource Center. Um, it's just the way it works. Um, if you have any questions about it, feel free to talk to me. I've worked with them plenty of times um, in, in both in my classroom and other uh, projects that I do for the college. Um, but the, this is their locations, their emails and their uh, and their phone numbers, not their locations, but they have one on every campus. Um, and uh, yeah, if you need more questions about it, feel free to ask. Academic integrity, I kind of hit on it before. Um, but sum it up in two words, don't cheat. Don't use Mathway to solve or, the, or solving apps to, so, to do your homework or your exams for you. I will know, I can figure it out. It's pretty easy when students cheat, there's a problem. There's some error in the coding uh, and, how, and how it works that I, I, I can figure out by the way. Um, so please don't, please don't treat me like I'm an idiot. Um, I don't appreciate it. I was a student once too. I know the temptations and I know the signs. Um, so anyways, please just don't cheat. I don't like being mean. I really don't. And I don't like being taken advantage of. Nobody does. So once again, academic integrity is basically just don't cheat. Otherwise I have to, I have to report it. I'm required by the college to report academic misconduct. Um, student rights and responsibilities. Basically, this can be summed up as don't be a jerk to your fellow classmates and to your uh, and to your teachers and to the school in general. Um, if you want some great reading, right, you can look at the student policies and procedures. It's a riv it's a riveting read, I know, um, but the, those are there. You can always go to the library for support. As I mentioned, they allow you to uh, rent out certain things, like they can let you rent out a laptop. I think uh, I don't know necessarily how they're doing that with COVID, if they have enough or whatever, but. Uh, feel free to check that out. Um, CAPS or Counseling and Psychological Service. This is this is a free. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's free. Uh, like last time I checked, it was. It's a free resource for you to seek counseling uh, for students who feel overwhelmed um, by anything that's happening in their life. You can reach out to them. Um, here's their phone numbers. You can talk to me about it if you want. Um, I'm always open. It's like, but you don't need to, you, you're not required to share it with me. It's just if you need, uh, if you want direction or anything, you can let me know. Uh, here's stuff about withdrawing and advising and coaching services. These are all things that are provided uh, for students. Here's the locations. Um, uh, date of last attendance is kind of just a bureaucracy thing. Computer grading. Uh, this is a good one to mention. And I'll, I'll probably bring this up several times throughout the semester. 
sometimes my math lab can be finicky, uh, like just like any online system. Like maybe you entered it in at like maybe you entered it in as one fifth um, when it was supposed to be fifteen, um, and it marked you wrong, of course, and it would give you zero credit, and that's not fair because you knew what you were doing, you just made a mistake. Uh, it is your responsibility to check through your assignment and make sure that there were no typos. Like maybe you accidentally added an X when you meant to write a Y or whatever, and you should still get full credit. If you email me and say, hey, I made this typo or whatever, I can look into it and I can give you credit back at my discretion. Um, sometimes I'll say, no, I can't give you credit back or maybe I can give you partial credit. Don't, don't expect it. But it never hurts to ask, what's the worst thing that can happen? I'll just say, I'm sorry, I can't give you credit for this situation. Best case scenario is to say, oh yeah, that's, that's a, that's, it was an easy mistake. I see where you made the mistake. You accidentally put in capital X instead of lowercase x. Let me give you full credit. So it never hurts to ask. And point being is check your, check your work after you're done and see if there's any mistakes. And let me know, okay? So it's your responsibility to do that. If you need help, finding how to do that, how to check your, your previous attempts, let me know. Going back to that student's question about tutoring, there is free Centers for Academic Success. This is completely free for drop-in tutoring for any CSN student who's registered for, I think, like three credits or more, or like maybe it's like you need to be registered as at least part-time or whatever. I, I don't know the specifics, but it should like, I don't think they're gonna be that picky or whatever, but you can attend this for free. Um, their, this is their, uh, their video. Here's how you can access uh, the online tutoring um, with your computer. Um, and then, as I said before, 126 has dedicated, 126E has dedicated tutors throughout the week. Um, and they're like, you can, you can, I'll, I'll be, they just sent out an email recently before I made all my stuff for my classes. So I'll try and add that at some later date for ways that you can access that free tutoring as well, okay? Uh, course summary, this is, uh, this, th this is just showing up with all the stuff that's due, um, and it, it'll show up in your course qu calendar as well. So that's the syllabus in all its glory. That took a while. Any questions? Okay, and if you figure out ones after the fact, feel free to email me or feel free to ask it later in the lecture or whatever it is. Uh, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, to go back to more things to navigate, to show you how the, the course works. If you go to your homepage, which is what you will always go to when you click on our class from your, uh, from your dashboard, um, this is what you'll see. And I will update this every week. So like right now it says week one. Um, Every single week, that it'll, it'll always have this, which is the link to join our Zoom meetings. Um, remember that the password is FF9. Um, um, it'll, it'll only be open through those times. Uh, oh, student says, sorry, do we need to, do we have to sign up for my math lab uh, or my uh, math lab? Yes, you do. It is absolutely required because that's where the tests and the homeworks are. And that's how you'll get a grade. If you don't sign up for that, you get zeros on everything and you fail the course. Um, as I, as I said, there's a two week free trial. Um, so, and I always encourage that don't buy it unless you're certain. Take the free two weeks, make sure you like the course, make sure you like how I have it. If you don't like me, um, I, I don't know why you wouldn't because I'm awesome. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, uh, but if you don't like my course or how I have it organized, you can always withdraw or like or, or cancel. Uh, and that way you're not out the like if you just use the free trial then you don't have to pay for it, right? So, well, thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the, the comment that I'm awesome. Um, so, a uh, student sent me a direct message. Yes, you can talk to me after class. Uh, I, I have a break afterwards. Um, I, I might have my baby with me, but uh, anyways. Um, so, um, this is what it will look like every week and it'll update. So this is what you should be doing each week. I'll try and update this right now. You should be looking over the course syllabus. If you have any questions, looking over the lecture schedule, um, attend my class every, every day, Monday through Thursday. Oh, that's a typo. That's a typo. That's not correct. I'll change that. Um, cause it's ours is 9 30 to 10 50. Um, and then the, the, the thing is sign up for my lab 
There's a two week free trial and complete the three homework assignments. It's, it's broken up into parts. Um, and then if you scroll down, it'll tell you the upcoming due dates. So here are our due dates for this week, which is the, the three homework assignments, part one of three, part two of three, and part three of three. Um, and then later on, lower, uh, lower down, recorded lectures. As I said, I will record every lecture like I did for this one. Uh, and then I will post it to YouTube and then provide a link later on once, the, once it gets uploaded. It kind of takes a little bit of time for it to upload. Um, so as I said, 36 hours was roughly uh, a good time. Usually I upload it that night, but every once in a while, life gets in the way, you know. The other thing, um, a couple colleagues of my, uh, 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 and myself have made a bunch of videos uh, from our old, old courses. Um, and I have them here as a math refreshers page. Um, there's Math 95 material, which is beginning algebra. I chose the most per pertinent ones, in my opinion. You can look at these at any time. These were made uh, uh, by a couple of my colleagues, uh, Jen Gorman and actually my wife, Ayla Cook. Um, so you can look at any of these if you want. And then later on, these are Math 96 material, which is intermediate algebra, which is factoring, rational expressions, radical equations, and fun basics of functions. You can look at any of these at any time. Um, if you need help navigating, let me know. Um, but these will just direct you to a YouTube link um, and feel free to use them for extra practice or to, to brush up on things. Um, th those will always be here when I put the record lectures. You'll notice that none of these links are clickable right now because we haven't had those lectures. We haven't recorded them. But as we go throughout the week, these will get updated and they'll become clickable links. But there's also uh, a link. So this will only have week one's lectures. Once we reach week two, these will change, right? They'll say Monday, September 5th, I think it is, or September 6th. But if you wanna go back, you can click here to go to our recorded lecture archive. So I'll break it up into test one, test two, test three, test four, test five, and test six material. And it'll be underneath test one material for this one. Um, so that's what our homepage will always do. It'll tell you everything you need to know, but uh, ah, so a student says the recorded lectures are the Zoom meetings, right? So we don't have to watch the videos if we join them. Very correct. So it'll just be what we did there. Um, so if you attended lecture, you already saw it, saw it. But the good news is the reason why I do this is also it's mainly so that if you can't attend it, you, you can watch it later on. But also if you want to rebrush up on something, you can always watch the lecture later as well. So I kind of re, re go over it. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it for that. Um, how to access my math lab. So right here is my lab in mastering. If you click here, yours is going to be a little bit different because mine's the instructor view, but you will be able to log in through here. Please take some time to get comfortable with this program if you haven't already. Um, and so mine looks different, but that's where you'll go for us, like, uh, for our course. Um, Go ahead and get into it as soon as possible because you can start working right away. I mean, granted, we haven't gone over any material. Um, we'll start that tomorrow. Uh, but um, yeah, um, what was I going to say? Um, this is where you'll access the homeworks and the quizzes, or sorry, the tests and the final exam. Uh, this is how you can access it directly through our Canvas page. This is where you go for all of our, our assessment stuff. If you want to go back to the syllabus, that's here. I'll, send, I'll make announcements that kind of basically just do what the week one homework, uh, the week one pay, uh, homepage does. Um, but you can still click on announcements for that stuff. Um, and then if you want to go to grades, that's will, that'll be here and that'll get uploaded uh, semi-regularly. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also click on modules. This is where we'll have important course links and other stuff. I try to make sure that this is already on the homepage, but every once in a while there'll be new things. So you can join my office hours here, uh, or you can click on the syllabus to join it. Um, and all these other things. You can also just click on this to go to the My Course Home as well. It's another way to do it. All right. And I think that about does it for the course and everything that we, we have. Any questions about the course, anything we've talked about today? or any questions about me.
and ask questions about me too. Um, Oh, uh, one last thing. I, I forgot to mention it. Uh, it's because it's important to me. It's one of my unwritten rules, and I have a couple, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll mention a couple of them as we go throughout the semester when I figure out, like when, when it comes into my head. But one of the ones I always mention on the first day is I have a, uh, I have a, um, oh God, what do I call it? It's been, it's been, it's been a long, uh, it's been a long summer. Um, my easy clause in my course no one especially me is allowed to use the words easy simple or basic in a mathematical context to belittle someone um i, I can use basic in the context of here's a basic example meaning here is a foundational example of what we're talking about that's when i can use basic and i say in a mathematical context because um if uh, if you ask me, uh, are the Seahawks going to win the Super Bowl? I'd say that's an easy question. Of course they are, because I'm a Seahawks fan. And subsequently, we are all now Seahawks fans until the end of the semester. Uh, but anyways, in a mathematical context, no one in this class, especially me, is allowed to use the words easy or simple, because mathematics has never been easy. It's never been simple from its conception. There's always going to be times where something comes easy to your yeah, like comes naturally to your uh, your fellow classmate and it takes you a while and vice versa. It happens to me with my colleagues sometimes too. So mathematics is a very humbling sport because it teaches us what we know and we don't know. And it, it never feels good to belittle someone or, or make someone feel inadequate because they don't know something. So I will never use that word. And if you if that happens, you have my you have my permission to ask me where I live or, or set up a time to meet with me and give me a punch. Normally in a, in, a, in, a, in, a live, in a live classroom, in a live lecture where it's in person, I tell my students that they can punch me or slap me up in front. But in this case, since we're remote, you have to ask me to meet you somewhere like a, a Starbucks or at school so that you can give me that slap. Anyways, uh, that's my, my easy clause. And I think that'll about do it for today. I'm sorry. Oh, student says, what do you prefer to be called by? I prefer Phil. Um, you can call me Professor Cook or Mr. Cook or Professor Phil. Any of those things work. Um, but uh, Phil is easiest. Um, uh, and then it's like, so do I have an account? So students, uh, uh, a couple questions. But anyways, uh, I'm going to like pretty much pause the video uh, for this one. Uh, like, so we're all done for today. Uh, if you need to get going to your next class or whatever, if you got to go in, feel free to. I'm going to keep it going for one last thing. These two questions that got asked. Um, but otherwise, have a great rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting to know all you guys. OK, so the last two questions um, was, do you have to make an account on my math, uh, my math lab? If you already have one, then no. If not, then, then it should prompt you as you log, as you click on this button, the My Lab Mastering. Um, otherwise, no. Uh, like, uh, and then the other one was, uh, uh, did, I, uh, did I do any videos for Khan Academy? I have not. Um, uh, but <laughs> thank you. I like, it's cool to, have, to know that I have a similar voice to someone at Khan Academy. Um, but I got to get going. Okay. Uh, so I'll see you guys later. I'm going to end the video. Uh, have a great day, guys. I'm sorry. I, I got to transfer over. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Stop recording. Where is the stop recording button? Student who, who needed me to stay. I know. I know. Uh, and stop share. And then um, where's end recording? Recording. Oh, there we go.